Howdy cruisers, still working on that. If anybody has a suggestion, you know what to do. Yesterday, I disembarked Icon of the Seas. Here's my 13 hot takes from that sailing. Sorry if I don't remember your name. Number one, the Empire Supper Club is a fun experience if you can spend $236 without noticing that you did. Number two, apparently it takes Royal Caribbean about two months to get the ship ready. I was in the first showing of the complete Aqua Theater show, and I was also in the first showing ever of The Effectors and Origin Story, or The Origin Story, or whatever it is. Number three, you might just end up skipping the dining room every day. The Pearl is... Okay, why don't you take a sailing on Icon of the Season? Let me know what you think. Number five, there are plenty of upcharge dining options, but I was always able to find a better complimentary version. Number six, yes, the ship has a very family focused. Regular families, extended families. Oh boy, yes, families, families, families. Number seven, Surfside though is for everybody. The kids, mom, dad, grandparents. So if they just want to play around in the splash paddle day, yeah, parents, grandparents, they, they have you taken very well care of. Number eight, that means Icon of the Seas isn't for everybody, but there is something for everybody. Number nine, dynamic pricing is still a scam and just be careful they don't steal your money. Number 10, they actually fixed all of the problems with the Oasis class. You can see the water, like from a lot of different places, you can see the water. Number 11, the scale of the ship, you have to sail to fully appreciate it because it is, it is impressive. Number 11, don't worry about the elevators. I had no problems with the elevators. Never a crowd, never a line, never a full elevator, even on a very packed largest cruise ship in the world. Number 13, Royal Caribbean does not know how to write surveys or whoever writes their surveys needs to be fired. I'll talk a little bit more about this one right now. So this is the how did you cruise question and the answer I chose is the closest one even though it is not correct. Royal Caribbean, we do not cruise alone. We are solo cruisers. And this tells me that there's a lot of people in the organization or in the company that does the cruise surveys that don't understand your market. This is actually pretty shocking to use terminology like this. In fact, well, you know what? It's either, and this is not good, neither is good. This either tells me that Royal Caribbean actually does not understand the entire market, which is kind of shocking for how well they're doing, but, uh, or, or they are kind of being openly hostile to that market segment because yeah, we don't cruise alone. That's honestly, it's kind of depressing. And to have that in the survey, oh, come on guys, um, read the room. The next question is what other vacation options did you consider before choosing a cruise? One of them is amusement parks. And if you choose that, you then get this list of amusement parks that you might have considered. And uh, well, that's why you have me as the roller cruiser. Um, I found the list very curious. Number one, Royal Caribbean. Again, read the room, learn your market. All of these, with one exception, are not amusement parks. These are theme parks. All right, just so you're clear on that. Again, who needs to be fired? And the order, I mean, it's, they're not even alphabetical. <laughs> they're not in order of attendance. They're definitely not in order of cost. And I just can't, I honestly, I cannot figure out what, wh why some made this list and others didn't, you know, I'm glad to see Discovery Cove on there, but, um, okay. <laughs> but, and guys, guys, why is Dollywood next to last? Do I need to cancel my Crown and Anchor membership? Then near the end of the survey, they ask you, what cruise lines have you sailed in the last five years? I just want to share with everyone, challenge accepted. I'll see you on board.